Hey gang, Troy Dean here again for the second live stream in a day if you live in Australia uh, or the US. If you're in the UK, then this will be the first live stream for Thursday and the previous one would have been the last one for Wednesday. Now that we've got that wrapped up, uh, I am being joined on this particular live stream by my good friend from the UK, Samantha Hearn. Hello, Samantha, how are you? Hello, thanks for having me. I'm good, thank you. Awesome. How are you? I'm very well. Do people call you Samantha or do they call you Sam? Sam. Sam. I only use Samantha so people know that I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. Of course. Now, if you are watching this, please leave us a comment. Uh, just tell us where you're from. Uh, you know, I'm from Sydney, Australia. I'm from Leeds in the UK. I'm from Sugarland, Texas. Uh, just let us know where you're from, just so that we can get an affirmative that it's all working. And uh, just also to make sure that our audio levels are, are all good, because Sam is coming in here from Skype and uh, I'm just directly in here, so we just want to make sure all the levels are good. Now, Samantha, for those who don't know, who are you and what are you doing here and what are we talking about? So myself and Troy today are going to talk to you all about mindset, which we both think are, you know, re is a really, really important topic. And, you know, we'll unwrap that as we go through, but definitely from our own backgrounds and the passion we have to make sure that all of you have the best mindset possible to go forward. And definitely in this current climate, you know, we thought it'd be really good Troy reached out and yeah, absolutely. So we're going to be talking about mindset, but my name is Samantha Hearn, but of course you can call me Sam. I live in Egham, so I live about 10 minutes away from Windsor where the Queen lives. No, I don't have tea in the castle. I wish I did. And um, I support women who want to use social media and organic community to build their business. Awesome. Uh, Pete Everett is here. It says, hey, Sam, good to see you in lockdown. Uh, of course, we met Pete at uh, Agency yeah, Transformation, yeah. which is Lee Jackson's fantastic event in April. That's where you and I first met. Uh, you you went on stage directly after me and um, I was kind of in a bit of a blur because I was a bit nervous and I came off and I'm like, oh, what just happened? And then I kind of sat there and watched your presentation and went, wow, she should have been the keynote. She's awesome. <laughs> and then so we connected uh, <laughs> off stage um, and that's where we obviously met uh, Pete Everett and a whole bunch of other awesome people. It was just great. That was a, an awesome event. Um, now, let's just take a step back. Before you got into the kind of coaching female entrepreneurs and empowering female entrepreneurs, you were originally, you kind of started out as an anxiety coach, right? How did, yeah, that, how yeah. did that come I, about? So I was a teacher by trade. So I did 10 years as a secondary school teacher. But during that time and my life, I really struggled with anxiety. It was something that um, played a really big part in my life through my experiences you know so quick rundown my, my dad passed away unexpectedly when I was a teenager my mum moved to Jamaica my brother moved to Scotland so you know by 21 I've been exposed to quite a lot of grief and uh, loss abandonment and things like that so I spent the majority of my 20s although I then went into teaching and I was serving others and supporting these amazing teenagers I personally was really struggling behind the scenes and had a lot of issues with my self-worth. And on the surface, I was really confident, but inside I was really insecure. I worried about everything. So it got to a point where I realized that teaching is something that I'm so passionate about, even now. And I, I loved being a teacher, but I just wondered if there was anything else I could give to the world. I just had this desire to do something else. And I just just thought being a teacher is amazing but I'm in that one village you know I'm just in that one school and I can't do anything else so I decided to set up an Instagram account and focus on what I know best which is anxiety mental health positive energy and everything I'd done by that point I'd overcome the anxiety in the sense it doesn't control my life anymore it isn't something that I feel dictates my emotions or my digestion or my health, anything. So I thought I want to just share that. So I set up an account purely to just help others in learning solutions for how to overcome anxiety. And it went really well. I wrote a book, I spoke on stages and um, it kind of all escalated from there. But that, that's why I, I went into anxiety. Um, so at this point, let's just let's just recap a second. How old are you when you start an Instagram account called A Happy Mind? How how old yeah. are you when you start an Instagram account to basically help others, you know, overcome anxiety? Twenty seven. Twenty seven, and which sounds like, you know, 
I'm in my mid forties now, and I reflect back on. I mean, twenty seven. In hindsight, did you like? I I just imagined at twenty seven, right? I didn't know shit from clay, so I would have been like, I'm in no position to like try and tell anyone anything. Did you have any of that imposter syndrome stuff going on in your head, or did you just have that youthful exuberance that people in their twenties have? Like, I can do this. I'm, you know, people are going to take me seriously. If I'm honest. No, I didn't because I think I had to grow up really quickly. So mm. I 27 for, for me was probably more the equivalent of like 37. You know, I felt like I'd been around the block. I had so many, so many, so many life experiences that people in their 40s haven't had yet. Mm. And of course, that's the way I wanted to say. Um, but I, I kind of felt the complete opposite. I felt like I was super relatable to people. I was accessible to people and I was of an age where the majority of people that were on Instagram and social media at the time were around that kind of age, you know, late twenties, thirties. So I actually felt like I was in a perfect position to come and and meet them where they were at. Um, So when I started, if if I go back to then, I didn't have imposter syndrome. I just thought, I know that what I'm talking about is valid because I've lived it. I know that no one can question my experiences because they're mine and I'm just going to share my answers. Of course, as as I grew, imposter syndrome came in because I realized the realm I was going into. When I first started, it was this whole whole new, oh my gosh, people use Instagram for business. What on earth? So when I first started, I didn't know any of that. I was naive to that aspect. So I definitely had the imposter syndrome when it started to grow. But when I began, I just... I was just coming from a place of service and I wasn't really thinking about the perception other people would have. I was mm. just hoping that the people that needed me would, would find me. Mm. Uh, Kate Abel, he's watching from Jamaica, says, you sound like a psychologist. <laughs> I'm not, but my mum lives in Jamaica. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> um, and I guess, you know, there is the... Uh, it, it is important when we're talking about mindset stuff and about anxiety and about you know matters of the mind that we do disclaim that we're not psychologists and that if these conversations bring anything up for you that you should definitely reach out to your GP and seek some professional help if you think that would be beneficial. Um, hand on heart, I can say it has definitely been beneficial for me over the years. I've spent a fair bit of time on the couch, as they say, with various uh, therapists over the years and it was the best investment of time and money I ever made categorically I would not be where I am today, wouldn't be the, the man I am today without that assistance and without that help. So, uh, but just want to make that perfectly clear to everyone watching. We are not psychologists and, uh, um, you know, please, if this conversation does bring things up for you, reach out and get some help from your local GP or your local support network. Um, Daryl Carey also says, morning from sunny London. So that's good. Uh, and Monte Cristo. Yeah, and and uh, my, my mate Chris Monte Cristo from uh, South Australia is also tuning in and watching. Um, so let's, I want to, I want to talk about, mindset a little bit because it's a it's kind of a it's a big word right it's a it's a big kind of word that a lot of people use and i think it's it's a bit of a buzzword i think a lot of people don't really understand what it is um sure we can dive into like why mindset is important which i think we should uh but let's flip the the script a little bit what actually is mindset when you're talking to someone about mindset what are we actually talking about for me the most important thing to do with mindset is how you speak and communicate with yourself how does your brain function for you so irrespective of what's going on in the outside world and you know how you respond to that I think that the the primary focus of mindset is what is your mind doing for you or against you how are you speaking to yourself how do you see yourself how do you perceive yourself and your success or your growth what are you doing to acknowledge who you are what on an inner level, you know, that deep knowing, that core root, how does your mind associate with yourself, the values, the beliefs, the worth, the connection, the confidence, the com- communication? That, that for me, in a nutshell, would be the, the, the main pathway that I think people need to recognize their mindset is for. A lot of people at the moment, and like you said, see mindset as something that you put into action. You know, let's be resilient or let's mm. be unshakable. <laughs> Let, let's overcome something. Let's yeah. do something on the outside. So I'm going to make my mind really powerful for the outside. But we forget that actually the most important thing to remember is it lives inside of, of you. 
you know, like your mind is for you. And if your mindset is always focused on doing everything out here, you're not in any way looking after your yourself and making sure that you've got all your self together and you, you've got all of these things in order so that when you do go on the outside you're already prepared so I feel like it's, it's not a secret ingredient to be able to you know get that client or overcome a nasty DM or whatever it's, it's not it's not a little pill that we take to that one problem it's something that we need to look at as ourselves. Like it's your mind, it's your brain. Mm. So go inwards first. That would be what I, that my perception. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things I've learned over the years is that you know, and, and it's been said a hundred different ways. Uh, you know, life doesn't happen to you; it happens for you. Uh, it's not it's not what happens to you that matters. It's how you respond to those things, and it's your reaction that uh, that is important. Um, really, because that's the only thing that you can control. You can't, we can't control the fact that we're in lockdown at the moment because of COVID-19. We just can't control that. We can't control what our politicians are doing. We can't control what the medical profession are doing. But what we can control is what we, the actions that we take while we're confined within the four walls. So one of the things that I've kind of learned over the years is that what happens in my life is usually a, an external manifestation of what's going on inside my head. And that if, thing, if I feel like things are falling apart in my life, it's usually because I have let my mindset, my thoughts kind of get out of control and I'm not exercising them enough. Like I'm not doing enough, you know, practice of staying calm. I'm not doing any journaling. I'm not, you know, setting my intentions at the start of the day. Maybe I'm not exercising physically, which definitely affects my, my mindset. And so when you were saying before how people think that it's something that you do, mindset is not something that you do. What happens in your life, in my experience, is a reflection of the work that you've done internally. And it's really, I find it really hard to explain to people unless they've, unless, unless they've kind of unlocked some of those neural pathways already and they've kind of had some acts, like they've kind of seen inside their mind and understand how it works. It's really hard to explain what going, what going inside means. Totally. I think the number one thing that I always think about in that situation, because it's true, and also we all experience things differently. So it's unrealistic for us to say that in order for you to have a really positive mindset, you have to do these 10 things because everybody's experience of the word positive is different. Everybody's experience and outlook on life is not the same. Mm. So I always think if I was to say now to everyone watching on the live, okay, so... You are the best version of yourself. The literally everything you've ever dreamed that you could be, have, do, achieve, create, it all exists. It's all there right now. And you're waking up and it's like, oh my gosh, my life is like unbelievable. I can't believe this is where I'm at. And I've worked so hard and all of these amazing things. I love my kids. I love my family. Wow, this is amazing. I've won awards. I've got a private jet, whatever it is. All of that exists right now to you listening. I would say, what's the first thing that you think? Are you thinking that's never going to happen? Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I might get there when I'm 70. If they're your responses and you're thinking it doesn't work that way, that's not realistic, and oh, I'd love that, but it's a fantasy. If you have those thoughts, then it's quite clear that at the moment, your mindset's not working for you mm. and there's resistance. Yeah. If you're thinking, yes, but I want to be in that energy and this is amazing, and why not wake up every day and think that everything is limitless and I can create whatever I want with this day? Your mind is working for you mm. and it's supporting you in this growth. That would be the basic idea that I would give people. If your instant reaction is to go to doubt or worry or skepticism or you know oh judgment then there's something in your mindset right now that's not supporting you because those feelings those thoughts they're not going to allow you to feel your best and that's ultimately what we're trying to achieve so mm. yeah that would be my analogy uh cape abel has said something interesting here and i, I want to address this because this it, it would be really easy to not address this right cape is uh from jamaica and says sometimes mindset is tailored by geographical locations cultures etc not everyone can be their best person based on circumstances 
Okay, Kate, what I would say to that is, and I've had this a lot, um, I, I, I totally see what you're saying, 100%. Now, if I was to, you know, if we were to connect things that I would say, and this is based on my experience, so I'm talking very much from the cards that I was dealt and the experiences that I've had, of course, you are probably seeing me for the first time and thinking, you know, where she lives, the experiences that she's got, the, the business that she's built. But if you were to meet me 15 years ago, the cards I were dealt would absolutely not associate with where I am now. Mm. The, the life that I had, the, you know, the economic status of my family, the struggles, um, the... There was a there was a lot there was you know a lot of um, there was a conflict in the, my parents a lot of relationship breaks down there was affairs there was alcoholism there was being made redundant and having no money there was depression death um, you know there's been a lot and I've had to work at times four jobs at the same time as teaching. So I had a job and I would work as a tutor, I'd work in my summer holidays and I'd babysit. Hmm. All I would say is, as much as that is is a valid experience, because it is, you know, we all, we all experience challenges. What I would say is, the number one thing that has helped me move away from that feeling of, this has all happened to me, and why me? I was a kid, why on earth was I given this hand you know what why was I shown all of this black mess and I could do nothing about it Mm. in that situation the one thing I would say is it's your it's your right and you have every right to focus on a solution and even if that solution is not a quick win which it wasn't for me and I know it hasn't been for Troy, you know, with how we experience life. It's, it's not a quick win. But if you're always thinking, what can I do to create something better? Even if it's just right now, you know, could I be more resourceful? Could I create another option for myself? Could I give myself another way, another solution? That mindset has led me to this point. And the challenges that I face have just made me stronger. They haven't weighed me down. I, I've chose to use them as my platform for growth. So, I mean, I'd love to hear what, what you think on this, mm. Troy. But for me, Kate, that would be that would be something that I would really invite you to think about creating solutions for yourself and really thinking about this approach of of an option, another option. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, look, I agree. F- f- first of all, I just want to acknowledge, um, Kate, that obviously we don't know anything about your circumstances or your situation. So it's you know really difficult for, for I mean, we're you know we're speculating. Um, I, I will say this though, you know, there's a there's a great um, story about Hurricane. You know, the story about Hurricane, the, the guy that spent years in jail for a crime that he didn't commit, and was eventually released. Um, when he was released, he was asked. Uh, you know, how did he survive in jail for so long, um, you know, wanting to wanting to get out, wanting to escape? Didn't that drive him crazy being stuck in this jail, knowing that he shouldn't be there and, you know, wanting to escape? Didn't that just drive him mad? And his response blew me away. His response was, I never thought about getting out. I never thought about escaping. I'm paraphrasing here. But what he basically said was, I made peace with the fact that this was my home for now and I got comfortable and I made it my home for the time that I was in there because the alternative to that is waking up every day with this this uh, this tension of being in a situation that you don't want to be in. So, and again, I will say that I know nothing about Cape's situation, so I'm not, you know, neither of us are really qualified to, to comment, but I will say this, that you, I think, I do believe you can be your best self within the circumstances that you are within, within the parameters that you are within. You can, Reuben Carter says Max Jeff got Reuben Carter, of course, is is Hurricane. Um, you can be your best self within the parameters and within the circumstances that you find yourself in, right? So David Hibbert says baseline comfort, yeah. So here's the thing: like there is so much about life that you can't control, right? And sometimes 
you feel like, and I've definitely felt this in the past, I've felt, why me? And and rightly so. I mean, I have, I, I think all of us at some point have had every right to say, why me? This is bullshit. I don't deserve this, right? I think everyone has a right to feel that. But what I've learned over the years is that staying there with that thought actually doesn't help me. It might be cathartic for a little while and it might allow me to vent my frustration and it might give me, it might allow me to feel like being pissed off with the world is a valid choice. And, you know, I can only speak from a, a, a boy's point of view, but I can tell you, like every young man at some point goes through a period of time where they're just pissed off with the world, right? It's just a, if for, if for no other reason, if because their testosterone is going through the freaking roof and they can't work it out, every, I reckon every, male teenager early 20s goes through a period of time of just being really pissed off with the world right mm -hmm. now if you if you then pour circumstances and situation on top of that where you you absolutely have a right to feel pissed off and you have a right to say why me but what i've learned is and i spent years in that situation i spent years manifesting situations in relationships with partners and with friends and with family where i got to be the victim again i got to be the one to see to go see the world just shits on me, doesn't it, right? And I would actually manifest those situations to then prove that because what I was thinking was that, yep, this is my lot. I'm going to be a, a struggler, a battler. Um, no one, you know, I'm not worth anything. I'm always going to have to fight for my own, you know, to, for, my, for my own space and my own room to breathe and to be heard. You know, it was a big thing for me. It was like no one listens to me. And so... Over time, though, and through a lot of therapy, I realized that <clears throat> it's okay to feel that way, but just know that feeling that way and staying with those thoughts is going to lead to more of the same. So if, that's, if you're okay with that, then that's totally fine. Uh, but if you want a different uh, outcome, you need to start thinking about the actions you're taking and for me, the actions that I take are, are directly informed by the thoughts that I give oxygen to and the thoughts that I give weight to. Now, we've all got, you know, about fifty to 70,000 thoughts in our head every day. We can't control them. They just pop in. They're just random. Most of them are useless. Most of them are really actually quite unhelpful, right? So for me, it's been about working out which ones are useful, which ones serve me, and going, oh, actually, that's interesting. That's a helpful voice. Thank you. Let's make friends with that. And let's, let's meditate on that one and all the other stuff can just fade away. And I think that's, um, that's probably been the, the number one thing that I've managed to cultivate in my own mind j just by going to some very dark places and spending, some, spending a lot of time in my own head and then working out. I actually have this skill, I, all of us do, have this power to grab onto a thought and go, that one is useful. I'm going to stay with that one. That one is what I'm going to carry with me today. And that's the one I'm going to keep repeating to myself. Yeah, there's actually a thing in teaching as well with um, students. We would teach them this all the time, and it's an acronym, but we can all use it. So you use the word think. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it true? Is it helpful? Mm. Is it important? Is it necessary? Is it kind? <laughs> if the answer isn't yes to all of those. So if the students would say, you know, they put their hands up and they say, oh, I don't know the answer, I would say you need to think. Mm. Is that true? Is that helpful? Is that important? Is it necessary to tell yourself that? And is it kind? Yeah. If we can't say yes to all of those, that's, that's a really easy way to filter if, if you are struggling with that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. I love a good acronym. I love a good framework. And I particularly love a, uh, I would call that um, a, what is it when a word is kind of the thing that it is? Like it's almost an autonym, right? I'm, I'm geeking out right here, right now. I'm geeking out. But an autonym, like the word word is an autonym because it actually is what it is, right? Uh, yeah. So th think that acronym almost feels like an autonym because you're thinking, but you're also analyzing your thoughts at the same time. I love it. Hey, Cape says he was very fortunate, grew up with a firm family structure, was born in, was born in wedlock, so he grew up with all the core values. He has what it takes to function in life, and he's from a, a trench town, Jamaica, which is considered a ghetto, uh, but without that push start from early on, I think it's difficult for most people to have a socially conducive mindset. He says, you guys are very helpful and I'm learning a lot. Awesome. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Love it. So um, we've talked a little bit about, <clears throat> well, actually, we've talked a little bit about a lot, haven't we? Um, we've talked a little bit about what kind of mindset is and we've talked about why it's important. You, you've now kind of, since we met, you've 
firmly, I wouldn't say pivoted, but you've kind of uh, widened your impact and you're now in the kind of business coaching mentoring space. How, this is a loaded question, I'm just going to tee you up to hit this one out of the park. How important is mindset to the success of your business? (laughs) I think, well, to give us all something to think about, to be a bit thought-provoking, I think people can be successful without working on their mindset but people won't stay successful if they don't work on their mindset. So in, nowadays, you know, modern technology, it's very easy to, to follow a strategy and have tools and techniques. But if you want to continue to sustain a level of success or progress or growth or momentum, your mindset is going to be the reason that happens. Because for me, I would say mindset is so much to do with that self-belief and the, the love and the compassion that you give yourself as well as others. So you could very much build a business based on pragmatic, rational, very logical steps. But if you want to really enjoy that business, if you really want to scale that business, if you really want to embody a life of freedom that your business could create or a life of opportunity, your mindset will be that missing key, that missing ingredient. So hopefully that gives us maybe something more to think about. The fact that it's not so much that, that it's not a, it's not available to you, but it's not attainable without you focusing on your mindset. Mm. Um, a couple of interesting things that come to mind, uh, two of arguably, you know, the most successful entrepreneurs on the planet I'm talking about Warren Buffett and Richard Branson someone asked Richard Branson once if you had an extra hour a day what would you do with it and he said work out and uh, mm-hmm. Warren Buffett is famously known for spending about four hours a day reading right now <laughs> I have this I'm in a situation in my business where frankly I've got a little bit of time on my hands which is a good thing because my wife's about to have a baby any minute so you know um, but I I find myself I have itchy fingers and I kind of want to get into the business and be productive and feel busy and do stuff. And I end up just breaking stuff and getting in the way and my team keep telling me to get out of the way. But I, I, I would, if I sat down and read for two hours a day at on a work day, I would feel guilty. I would feel like I was wasting time. And yet that's an investment in my own development, right? I even feel guilty meditating because I feel like I'm wasting time. I have, I've had this on again, off again relationship with meditation for years, mainly off than on, because I feel like, this is 15 minutes where I could get some shit done, which is just mind-blowingly obvious when I when you think about it, that 15 minutes of meditating could actually give you another two hours of productivity in the six hours that you're going to work that day, right, because you have mental focus. Um, but I, so what I'm, the reason I'm touching on this is because you, you said something about, um, you know, you're going back to kind of being compassionate to yourself and I think they are things like exercising your mind and body are acts of compassion to yourself. I see this happen all the time. Entrepreneurs flog themselves to death trying to grow their business and sacrifice their own health, sacrifice their relationships, sacrifice their family life in the, in the, on the mission to do what exactly? Yeah. Do you know what? I actually, on that, I'm very similar to you. And I think as well, like being a, a Gemini um, I like to do, I'm, I'm very much, you know, let's just do, do, do. So I'm, I'm the same as you. Do you know what I would do, Troy? I would embrace that because it's what I've done and it's made a huge difference. So this morning, obviously to be ready for eight, I got up and I washed my hair and all that stuff. Um, and what I do, because I'm the same, meditation doesn't give me the same sense of grounding because my mind is also very active. So what I do is every morning when I'm getting ready, I put, and I did this this morning, I played a 15 minute YouTube video called Positive Affirmations. Mm. And it's a man that says, you know, I am powerful, I am loved, I am safe. And I do my makeup. And I think I'm not then consciously listening, but my subconscious is. So I put it on the, on the floor and I get ready. So I actually put the two together. When I go for exercise, I listen to a podcast. Yeah. Because halfway through, I'm panting so much that I can't focus on the podcast. Yeah. But I know that it's doing my subconscious yeah. good. Yep. So I think, yeah, otherwise I'd be exactly the same. I always feel like oh, I could be doing more. So now I think, okay, how can I just fit it in 
to the personality and the life of me rather than change myself. And I know I know it has a positive impact. So even now, I I remember those four affirmations. There's 20, mm. and I wasn't even really listening to it. Yeah, I yeah. was doing my makeup and checking the time and making sure I was ready and all of that. But in the background, it's obviously worked because now I'm mentioning it. Yeah. So and it just see, it just it, yeah seeps into the subconscious, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I got to pull this up on the live stream because uh, Cape Abel here has said best live in a while. Awesome, love it. Thank you, uh, Cape. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, uh, and and he also says you're really smart. Need more people like you in the world. Trump needs to hire you. <laughs> Fantastic. That's gold. Um, hey, by the way, I haven't watched the news for a couple of days. How's Boris Johnson? Is he in intensive care? Is he being well looked after? Is he okay? Yeah, I don't really watch the news either, yeah. um, which is all part of my mindset stuff. Yeah, with this conscious same. Part. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but I do know he's he's recovering. He's right. not. Okay. Um, he's not in. in if it, right again, this is I'm totally reading what my husband tells me into this because I haven't actually watched this myself. Yeah, but I know that he's doing better. There's right. positive signs, so that's good. Great. So, um, doing. Hey, Mel J. Uh, waves says hey, hi. Mel. Hey, Mel. How you doing? She's in Sydney. She's in Sydney. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Now, um, we we missed paths in Australia late last year, didn't we? Which was so yeah. unfortunate. I know. You were out here. Did you actually stay for Christmas? Yeah, so we were there for oh. Christmas and New Year. But as you know, it's so busy, isn't it? And then you're seeing yeah. family and there's different yeah. events. So, yeah, it's such a shame. Yeah, and it was nutballs. And we, uh, I was in between events and, yeah, it was just yeah. crazy. But we, don't worry, we'll definitely – once we come out of the zombie apocalypse and we're allowed to travel again, we'll definitely touch base again. Um Simon Clay says, same, I don't watch the news. Let me tell you an interesting anecdote, right? When the uh, when coronavirus started to happen, when it, when it really started to take off, 13th of March, it was Friday the 13th, we were moving house. Pure chance that we moved into, we were living in an apartment, got a two and a half year old and another one about to pop. I was in the States in February. <clears throat> My wife kept emailing me these photos saying, we're moving, that's it, I'm done. We're moving out of this apartment. We're getting a house with a backyard. I need some space. I'm like, cool, baby. We've been talking about this for two years. Just do it, right? So I signed I signed the documents while I was in the States on this house I'd never even seen. Got back home, came and checked it out. I'm like, this is awesome. We move in Friday the 13th of March. I'm listening to Talkback Radio, news radio, as we're kind of moving over the weekend. And over the weekend, I'm listening to this thing called coronavirus. Just And I, I knew about it. In fact, I was tested when I came back from the States, right, to make sure I didn't have it. And I was... I flew to the States on the 13th. Far out. I... I flew to LA on the 13th, the oh same my, as you, had oh no God. idea what I yeah, news, yeah. got there, my flight home got cancelled. So I flew on the Friday, on the Sunday I was flying home. Wow, far out. Um, and so what happened is, is I, it, it happened so quickly, right, that yeah. I, by the Sunday night, we, we moved in and we were surrounded by boxes, I started to fall into a very dark place. I was. I started to catastrophize. I was having conversations in my head about how we were going to have to let staff go and how all the money was going to dry up. And I was in a very, very dark place. And it happened really quickly. A couple of things I did uh, that pulled me out of that. One is I stopped watching the freaking news because that is just a catastrophe. And two is I, I realized, and I was actually, I actually got some coaching from a buddy of mine who helped us, uh, helped me sort of rethink this. Is there's really kind of a stage of reaction when something like this happens. First is denial. Second is panic. Third is uh, limbo. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait for the government to tell me what to do. Fourth is optimism. Oh, actually, no, no, this is going to be good. There's a silver lining in every cloud. Uh, fifth is, no, 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 screw this. I'm taking control. There are still things I can do. I've just been going live a lot. I've been, you know, educating. I've been, you know, spending a lot of time with our customers, putting out a lot of content just taking control, reaching out and getting all the assistance we can from the government. We've been very fortunate here in Australia. The government have been looking after businesses. So, you know, we're in a good place. But it was really interesting watching how quickly my mindset got destructive yeah. in the span of like 48 hours and how it just happened. And and I and then I, I was like, whoa, I've lost control of my thoughts. And it just snuck up on me. It happened so quick and it took a conscious effort to pull myself out of that and get my hands back on the wheel. 
Yeah, totally. I was exactly the same. I obviously was stuck in LA. I, I, I traveled 22 hours in three days. And I was like, you know, I had to miss the reason I was there. I was supposed to be there for 10 days. I was there for a Saturday. I flew to LA for Saturday, came home. And the same as you, I was then forced to watch the news because obviously they closed the borders. Could I get home? You know, it was this big, you know, I felt like I'd gone into this pit of madness. Um, and I was the same. I came home and unfortunately, the government here on supporting limited companies, which obviously I am. So sole traders, self-employed, but limited companies. So I was then like, oh, my gosh, this is I should just be a teacher. I shouldn't yeah. have left teaching. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I had a pension. I've got my salary. This what did I do? Yeah. And I had that. I was the same out of nowhere. I think if you have anxious tendencies or experiences, it, it happens much quicker anyway because yeah. our mind goes on that loop faster. But yeah. same as you, the next day, I thought, right, let's just equalize here. Let's just go back to what we know. A similar thing, think, is what I'm actually thinking in my head true right now? No, it's not. Nothing's collapsed. Nothing. Nothing's <laughs> collapsed. Yeah. And then I go into, I very much go into my masculine. I'm going to do something. Yeah. I obviously I'm a survivor. That's in my mindset. You know, all this stuff, even as a kid, right, let's keep going. What can we do? So I automatically, what can I do? And I did the same as you. I did lives. I did free coaching. I put on bonus sessions for my clients. I went above and beyond to focus on them and just do everything I could. Mm. And by the by, that following Friday, so obviously the 13th I flew, by the following Friday I actually went to bed and I said to my husband, I feel really proud of myself. Mm. Even thinking about it, I feel a bit like, Mm. I feel really proud of myself because I could have mm. focused on myself, yep. felt mm. really guilty, felt like a victim, and I actually went to bed and said, I have done the best I could for my people. I yeah. could not have given them any more. I filled my diary. I was supposed to be away the whole week off. I filled my diary. So I think definitely when we find ourselves in a state of this like, helplessness, choose to help others. Yeah. If you're ever feeling that, that lack of control and this chaos, yep. choose to serve others. It's the best way to not only give other people hope, but to reinforce your own value, reinforce your knowledge, the experience you've got. So I'm the same as you. I just thought, let's just serve. Yeah. All I can do here is give love yeah. or I give myself panic and I don't want yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I actually learned this when I went through a bout of depression in my early 30s, I reckon. Uh, I was you know, hanging out with a friend of mine. No, actually, it was my late 20s. I was hanging out with a friend of mine like every day I would basically just go and hang out with him and you know he 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 <laughs> I wore him down eventually he said to me you know I say this with great love but a little less conversation a little more action you have to stop talking about this stuff and take some action and he actually said to me the best thing you could do right now would be go volunteer and help other people and I I'm, I'm like you know are you insane I'm not going to do that I'm going to wallow in my own self pity and, and like immediately you start helping other people, you get out of your own head and you get gratitude from other people, which releases endorphins and all sorts of wonderful serotonin and noradrenaline through your body makes you feel, actually makes you feel better about yourself as a human being because you're helping other people yeah. and you break that circuit of being stuck in your own head. Yeah. Love it. Um, so talking about the pandemic, um, <laughs> what, you know, let's talk a little, let's, let's get practical. What is your like daily or kind of weekly routine look like to keep yourself positive given the weird circumstances that we're living in right now? Yeah, for sure. I think I just want to say as well, even with this, we're all experiencing this differently. And I think there's the first thing that we need to recognize is this isn't a competition of who's got it worse or who's experiencing it worse. This is a collective. This is a time to come together. This is a time in all of our lives we have never had something that has impacted all of us. We are all in this together. That is the most important thing. You know, myself and Troy are on the other side of the world. Mm. We couldn't be further away from each other. And we've come together to mm. share love. Mm. And I think that whatever the situation, we are all able to love one another. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So for me... One, a few things I'm doing, I'm, I'm not watching the news. Um, my husband's always been really into like history and politics and the, the globe and the environment. So he does. If there was anything to know, I know he would tell me, but I, I don't watch the news. I, I, I am trying my best 
to continue with my normal routine of, you know, waking up when I wake up. It's now turning into spring here, which is lovely. Um, so I wake up again. I listen to like a YouTube video while I'm getting ready. I think that's really important. Anything. It could be. I, I, yesterday I listened to Usher. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's anything that just makes me feel good. So feed yourself something good. Um, I then make sure I go outside. And the other two are I make sure that I connect with my people in some ways. So at the moment I'm doing lives, but the same as Troy. Um, and the other thing I do is I just, it's in our homes, I think we all need to recognize that right now we would, we'd rather be anywhere else. We'd rather be anywhere but stuck in the house. But I'm trying to, as much as possible, see it in the other way. I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that I have a home. Mm. And when will, there, when will there be a time that we can be in our home guilt-free? We can't go anywhere else. Mm. We can't be anywhere else. We, no one else can need us. We can't split our time. So yeah. I'm actually trying to do more things like watch TV, clean the house. Um, I bought a bookshelf to like declutter one of my rooms just to love where I'm at. Mm. And I think for all of you, they would, my, my pillar is more pillars than it is stuff. So I'd say the first one is like energy, Mm. feed yourself with some kind of positive energy, whether that's music, a video, a podcast, two would be gratitude or love, do something that makes you feel grateful and just loving of the situation. Three would be environment. So do what you can to be in your natural environment, you know, in in a park or obviously with social distancing, but somewhere where you can be in that environment. And number four is slow down, allow yourself this time because you'll, you know, you're never going to get that again. So they they would, that would be my outlook. Yeah. I, um, it's really funny since I made the switch, uh, great, great uh, advice, by the way, since I made the switch, I'm now seeing the silver lining everywhere. I was at the park today with Oscar in the middle of the day. He's two and a half. The dog's running around. He's taking his shoes off. He's running around the oval, which we're so lucky. I mean, again, I'm so grateful that we moved into this beautiful house when we did. We're right near an amazing park. We're in a great neighborhood. Uh, It's, you know, five minutes away from where we used to live. We know the area really well. Our neighbours have been incredible. They've just been turning up on the doorstep, keeping their distance, obviously, but just giving us toys for Oscar that their kids used to play with that they're about to throw out. And it's just been you know, handing us flowers over the back fence. It's been amazing. But I was at the park today and I was looking around and I was thinking to myself, it's so good to see so many dads in the middle of the day on a Thursday hanging out at the park with their kids. I yeah. have a prediction that a lot of people, once we come out the other side of this, I have a prediction that a lot of people are not going to be in a hurry to go back to the office at least full time. They might go back to the office a few days a week, but I have a prediction that a lot of people are going to be pretty happy to spend at least half the week working from home because I'm spending so much time with Oscar and Amy at the moment. I'm still getting work done. The hours are a little bit weird. I'm up early. I might you know, take an hour and a half off in the afternoon and then come back in once Oscar's gone to bed and do another little bit of work. It's fine. You don't need to work nine to five. Who cares? Who said that anyway? Like you can, it's work-life integration. And so there, there, you know, there are positives everywhere if you can just train your mind to look for them. And, and gratitude, I think, is the other thing that is so important. Such a, a great, I feel like gratitude's my secret weapon. If I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed or a bit anxious, I just start practicing gratitude because it's really hard to be grateful and pissed off at the same time. <laughs> totally, totally. And also just to know that you're not alone. Like this is the one time that we're all grieving different things, whether it's a wedding, a holiday, unfortunately and so heartbreakingly a person. Yeah. We're all, we are all as a collective feeling uncertain. So yeah. I think also just recognize and find comfort in that find gratitude in the fact that for the first time ever Mm. the the world is in this together you know like really the energy even at home so in the uk every thursday at eight we're clapping for the nhs which is so so lovely and obviously i'm so grateful that i live in the uk and we have this amazing medical it's unbelievable and schools have put up posters, parks like have put out twigs and made messages. And every night, every Thursday, I stand on my street, there's pots and pans, 
I don't even know some of these people. And now we're all like, yeah, like when this is over, you'll say hello in the street more. You'll yeah. be able to talk to people. You know, I'm meeting dog walkers that I've never seen before because now there's nothing else to do in the middle of the day. And they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, hi, yeah. hi. Yeah. Find, it's exactly that. Find, find the time that you can just share energy with someone else and yeah. know that it's okay. It's okay if you're feeling unsure, but choose choose to remind yourself that you're not alone. There's a collective energy and we can always be grateful for something. We can always be grateful for something. Yeah, love this. Uh, David Hibbert said, just got told I'm making flatbread with the kids. <laughs> That's fantastic. Love it. Yes, David. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, I just do want to open this up for any final questions. I'm respectful of everyone's time, and we've been here for a 45-minute live, which is awesome. Uh, Mel J says, our community has grown closer. A neighbour I'd never met introduced herself when I was getting my bin, and we exchanged numbers. We've had drinks with friends over Zoom every week, whereas previously kids made it harder for us to catch up. Yeah. We pulled Oscar out of daycare a couple of weeks ago, and we've actually got him on Zoom with a couple of his friends as well, and we've been, you know, catching up with parents while the kids kind of just look at each other and go, huh, what's going on? Trying to figure it out. Um, so it's, I mean, it's different, and it's uh, it's not, you know, it's, uh, I think there's, I think things will change when, once we come out the other side of this. I think, you know, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not here to say, well, you know, it's all good, but I think if there is some, if there is something that I'm reflecting on at the moment, it's the fact that this has been a bit of a circuit breaker, and it's forced all of us just to slow down a little bit and go, what is really important? Like, let's just not get back on that treadmill for the sake of it. Let's be more intentional and more conscious about how we spend our time. And uh, I think there's a lot of people who are really grateful to be spending time with their families. It's not all rainbows and unicorns, obviously. Um, one of the challenges is that, you know, home is sometimes not a safe place for, for a lot of people. And this is one of the challenges with schools is that sometimes school is actually a safer place for kids. So I'm not yeah. pretending it's all rainbows and unicorns at the moment. And there are many, many challenges that we're still having to um, to navigate. Uh, Mel J says, I'm excited that Sam's been decluttering. Go girl. So I take it, is, is Mel J a decluttering expert? She is. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Monte Cristo says, I agree. Some things will change for the better on the way out of uh, coronavirus. I believe uh, that is true as well. Um, so what's happening for you? Like, let's let's fast forward six months and we're back on the street and we're allowed to go outside again. What happens for Samantha Hearn? What's going on in your world? What are you excited about? Well, mate, I will still be here. That is my mindset, you know. My business will still be here. I'll be going strong. Nothing, nothing is going to stop me. That is, at the moment, I'm taking it one step at a time. I've had to move events, as you will have, and I'm thinking, yeah. you know what the bottom line is? I'm going nowhere. That's it. I'm going nowhere. So in six months' time, my business will be stronger than ever. I will feel happier than ever before because I've been able to, you know, navigate through this time. Mm um travel is a big part of our life we go mm. away kind of every 12 weeks so we should right now be in peru and bolivia um and we're not obviously so i think in six months time we will be we're due to be away so i'll be traveling and i'll also remember that i can take more time i don't need to constantly do 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 and i'll just to be honest Again, I'm not allowing my mind to think too much on um, business plans, as in actual things, just in case. But what I am doing is keeping the constant mindset of no matter what, I'm still going to be here on the other side. So the biggest goal for me is I'm I'm going to stand victorious. That's that's the bottom line. So awesome. yes, and that's the intention, <laughs> and and that's what it's about. Like that is the intention right there. The intention yeah. is that you're going to stand victorious, and if you if you have that intention and you believe it. You think it, you believe it. I go back to Napoleon Hill, thinking grow rich. You think it, you believe it, you really believe it, and you emotionally embody that future. You, your, every part of your being will go into overdrive to make it a reality. As long as you keep thinking those thoughts that serve you. Hey, this has been yeah. this has been awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, where can people get in touch and learn more about you and get connected? I'd say probably the best place is to go to my website because you can then get all the links and, you know, all of that good stuff. So it's just my name, SamanthaHearnCoaching.com. 
Awesome. SamanthaHearnCoaching.com. I'll put a link in the comments after this, so uh, keep your eyes out for that. SamanthaHearnCoaching.com. Get on over to her website, connect, say hi, keep in touch. Uh, she's the real deal. We had a great time hanging out in the UK. We had some fantastic conversations that will never be shared outside of that environment uh, over dinner, which was, we learned a lot about each other, which was great. <laughs> I really enjoyed I really enjoyed that night uh, hanging out with all the speakers uh, at Lee Jackson's event. It was a great event. And um, yeah, uh, um, unfortunately, it's all going to be virtual this year. But uh, you know, look forward to getting back into the live event scene once uh, once the pandemic is all over and we're free to travel again. And look forward to crossing paths again with you if you're ever out this side, or maybe we'll hang out in San Diego soon. Who knows? Thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for doing this for your community and like bringing this love together. I really appreciate being part of it. Pleasure. Well, thanks for getting up early and being a part of it, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Samantha. Bye for now.